Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renault and today I'm going to talk to you about input in the Corgi Engine. Input is at the heart of every game. Uh, most of the time you have a way, whether it's by using a gamepad, using you know um, your keyboard, your mouse, uh, you'll always have a way to control uh, what happens on the screen. Um, the Corgi Engine is no exception to that currently supports mobile controls, so iOS, Android, uh, Windows Phone are supported. Um, there's uh, keyboard support, that's what I'm using right now, and uh, gamepad, uh, the setup for Windows is um, Xbox gamepad, but uh, you can rebind it to use a PlayStation gamepad or whatever. It's just, you know, uh, standard Unity stuff. And uh, it also supports the mouse to aim uh, weapons. By, by default, uh, the keyboard layout has been created to support four uh, players. So, um, for example, here I am in the, the Hunt uh, demo scene. It's a four-player deathmatch um, scene. And uh, right now I'm playing as both uh, the red character and the green one, uh, and also the blue one. Uh, so you can play to up to four players uh, using one keyboard. Uh, of course, it's not really practical, so using gamepads uh, is much much easier. So, um, how do you change uh, your key bindings? So to do that, uh, all you have to do is go into Edit uh, Input. So that's the first one, and it will uh, open this panel here, uh, Input Manager, and that's a lot, a lot of access. I mean, uh, that's that's quite a lot because you have uh, the bindings for all the four players. The structure is quite simple. You have uh, player one horizontal, player two horizontal, player three horizontal, player four horizontal, and then another axis and so on and so on. Um, this is native Unity stuff. So uh, you can have a look at the documentation uh, on Unity's website if you're not familiar with it. But basically what you need to know is that um, it has a key, uh, a name here, player one horizontal, uh, and then you can set up keys. So, uh, for example, uh, when I press D, uh, I'll apply a positive value uh, to my horizontal axis, and if I press A or Q, I'll apply a negative value. So, uh, which means I'll be going left, and with B, I'll be going right. Uh, once you've done your changes here, uh, you can just you know leave the panel. It saves automatically, and um, and you're good to go. Once you've defined your key bindings here, uh, you'll need in your scene uh, an input manager. I'll leave the multiplayer scene for now uh, to take a more common example. Uh, here I am in the lava demo scene, and if I select my UI camera you'll see that here I have an input manager. So uh, you need one in your scene if you want to take advantage of you know, what it does. Uh, the first thing you notice is the player one ID here. Uh, it's really important to specify uh, player one or player two or player three or player four because that will uh, determine what key configuration, key layout you want to use. Uh, you can of course you know create your own and so on but uh, the basic idea is that for most situations you'll want player one written here um, you can also uh, have something where you let the engine handle uh, the player ID uh, so for that when you go into a level manager you can say auto attribute player IDs and what this will do is that when it takes a character and instantiates, instantiates it, uh, it will replace uh, the player ID with player one, player two, player four, uh, depending on uh, where in the array, uh, in the level manager array, the player is. But really, uh, if you don't want to get into too much details, just player one as player ID and you're good to go. What's really interesting with this method is that uh, you can have multiple characters controlled by a single input. So for example, if I go into uh, the minimal level 
uh, demo scene and if I uh, I'm, I'm just gonna drag you know a bunch of uh, playable characters inside uh, the game so I'm gonna take the um, the Mario guy well I didn't say Mario did I uh, I'm gonna take the pretty one I'm gonna go into uh, this folder there's a bunch of them a cat a chicken and a pig all right so uh, if I press play they are all bound to play one so uh, which means that I can control them all at the same time if I jump they all jump uh, and that's particularly useful if you want to have uh, two characters and compare them and tweak them so I, I'm gonna remove all these and I'm gonna go back to uh, minimal folder select my rectangle I'm just gonna disable the, the laser uh, on its weapon right here don't mind me just back and forth all right so I'm gonna put a bunch of rectangles in the scene. So uh, now I have three rectangles, they all act uh, the same, of course. Uh, so when I jump, they all jump. But let's say I want to tweak the jump uh, without you know, having to guess and so on what's happening and what did change. I can just modify one of them and compare with the others. Uh, so I just have to find the jump script somewhere in this mess yeah and uh, let's say i wanted to jump a bit higher and i want also you know the um, the full multiplier to be 1.3 for example so now if i press play you'll see that uh, for the same amount of jump uh, i have something really different and that's a really good way to to tweak your game uh, taking advantage of the input system included in the corgi engine now if we go back to our uh, input manager we also have something called mobile controls uh, the idea here is that the corgi engine comes with support for mobile platforms uh, whether it's an iphone ipad android tablet phone uh, it's all supported it's all fine uh, there's a checkbox here called automobile detection uh, right now i'm on a build setting for PC but I could switch uh, to Android I won't do that because it takes ages uh, but if I switch to Android uh, you'll see that automatically actually I'm, I'm gonna do that I'm just gonna stop the video for, for... all right a uh, few minutes later I'm back on the Android build target so now if I press play you'll see that I now have uh, some some mobile controls on, on the screen that uh, I can uh, use with the with the mouse uh, of course if I were to compile on an actual uh, mobile device I, I could use taps and you know all the uh, classic uh, mobile device inputs uh, there are a few things relating to that in the input manager inspector uh, so I can uh, turn on or off the automobile detection this will uh, enable the system to switch the mobile controls on or off whether i am on android or ios uh, i can turn that off uh, i can also force a mode uh, so for example i can be in automobile detection and force desktop and so uh, even if i am on android uh, i'm back to desktop controls so uh, gamepad keyboard stuff like that um, what else do we have uh, I have an option to hide mobile controls in editor even if they are active uh, I have an option to but but they would be uh, active in in the device if I were to compile and um, I have also an option to have a joystick for my mobile controls instead of the arrows so uh, now I have a joystick and I can you know control my character using a more analog way uh, and lastly what do we have we have the smooth movement so for example if I go back to desktop move that out of the way press play uh, what this does is that I now have movement that is more uh, binary 0 or 1 
so really I just just two different ways and really depends on the kind of game you want but uh, some some people prefer without uh, the smooth movement on um, and that's that's pretty much all there is to know about the input manager so when you're using uh, mobile controls basically what happens is that well I, I'll just press play and no, I'm going to set the first mobile um, what it does is inside the UI camera the GUI, the GUI manager turns on rows or joystick depending on what you've chosen and the buttons the buttons are um, just a canvas group containing button A, R, T, B, Y, X, uh, and A. And all of these has an MM touch button uh, script on top of that. W one thing I didn't mention is that the Corgi engine is using Nice Touch, which is, which is a mobile input solution I, I developed and uh, put on the asset store. It's a separate asset, but if you already own the Corgi engine, don't buy Nice Touch uh, because you basically already own it. Um, so uh, these buttons here, uh, you'll be able to define, you know, the source image. You can, of course, change all that. You can reposition them however you want. And here, uh, there's the binding. So the binding, what it does is it takes a script here as uh, a target. So it will be the input manager. And here you can select all kinds of functions. So you can say that, for example, here, uh, when that a button is pressed for the first time uh, we want to trigger jump button down because that's our jump button so when it's released jump button up and when it's pressed uh, in this case nothing uh, and uh, for example here uh, the, the B button uh, will have our jump or jetpack button pressed active um, that's pretty much all there is to uh, to it you can have a look at the nice touch documentation if you want to know more about it but uh, really that's all there is to say about um, input in the Corgi Edge I hope you learned something new today and talk to you next time bye